Assassin's Creed Shadows. It just gets worse. So we finally know what the official name of Assassin's Creed Red is. This is the Assassin's Creed game that's going to take place in Japan. It is officially called Assassin's Creed Shadows. We got a cinematic trailer. And as you can see from likes to dislikes ratio, uh, there are some aspects of it that people are divided about. So there are... Doesn't look to me like it's divided. It looks like the people are on the side of common sense. And that's good to see. Three videos of this worth watching. There is the world premiere trailer. There is this right here. Who are Naoe and Yasuke, the two protagonists of this game? Also... Oh boy, and here they said that Yasuke is a 100% real character. Oh my god, it, it's great. Well, he is a 100% real character in history, that is true. But man, are they stretching this as far as they can. Oh, he's the real legendary historic character. So, likes of this likes ratio, not great. And we have Assassin's Creed Shadows Explained, uh, which, again, likes this, likes ratio-wise. Uh, there is certainly uh, quite a bit of division. Let's talk about why these trailers are being negatively received. There's the aspect of the bold choice of one of the protagonists that definitely plays a role. Bold choice, he said. Really, now? But to me, the... Greater issue is anti-consumer aspects of how this game is being sold and monetized. I think that to me is what should be the focus. But in terms I mean, it's just your everyday Ubisoft slop. If you're buying it, that's your own problem at this point. No one cares that Ubisoft is anti-consumer. They have been forever. They're not going to change. Just don't buy the game. How about you just find a site where you can download this for absolute no cost at all and be happy about life. It's gonna be up day one when it's released, like always. There are ways to not over overpay a single penny for this absolute travesty. In terms of what's going on with the protagonist, well, uh, you've got a Japanese woman here, Naoe, who is a sh I think it's a day them, honestly. Didn't look like a woman, didn't look like a male. Uh, that's obviously intended. We literally have reports that Ubisoft and Activision are two of the biggest companies that have extreme uh, diversity and inclusion BS going on in them. AKA, if you don't have enough of it in every aspect of the game, people are literally not getting uh, promotions. People are not getting, uh, you know, any kind of bonuses. They're not getting anything. And there are literal officers with probably bandanas with, you know, strange looking crests on their arms that are making sure that at every single step of making this atrocity, that certain things were upheld. Shinobi character. And then we got Yasuke here, who is an African man who ended up in Japan, who is a samurai. And he is the other protagonist. And there's arguments as who is not a samurai as to whether an Assassin's Creed game set in Japan should feature an African character when so many previous Assassin's Creed games feature protagonists who are native to the culture. So many. By that, he means every single Assassin's game did that. But when it comes to Japan, oh, no, 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 that's a little bit too white there, Chief. How about, yeah, a black character. There we go. The best. Culture that the game is representing. Now, important to note about Yasuke is that he is a real historical figure. He is someone from Africa. It is believed to be Mozambique specifically, who ended up in Japan and happened to serve under none other than Nobunaga himself as a retainer. But there are arguments as to whether a retainer is technically a samurai and if Yasuke should be. A retainer can be almost anything. We already know that represented as a samurai now i'm no historian so i cannot tell you for sure either way but uh, plenty of historians or people who know japanese history seem to insist that being a retainer to uh nobunaga does make you a samurai and that yasuke did serve in that aspect there's also actually a lot of media that have featured yasuke like the tv series called yasuke that is yeah by netflix wow you're it's so surprising <laughs> that netflix made this Oh no! Who, who would have expected Netflix to make this garbage? Wow! Never heard of it. Was probably atrocious in that case. It's being streamed on Netflix. You got Afro Samurai, which. 
Yeah, which was a 100% real thing again. Wow. Which was inspired by uh, Yasuke, even though we also have the well-known series Afro Samurai from Takashi Okazaki, which was inspired by Yasuke. Yasuke has also been featured in a number of video games like Neo, for example. There is this character named the Obsidian Samurai who is very much just Yasuke, and he was made into a character for this game. Yasuke was also made playable in the video game Samurai Warriors 5. Then in the fighting video game Guilty Gear, you've got this character named Nagori Yuki, who very much looks like an African samurai, and he was inspired by Yasuke. So yeah, he's been featured. Okay. So, does that make it magically okay? Does does that make it magically valid? If I if I take a shit on my table and put the uh, put the fl uh, flag of hmm, let's pick a location, uh, Australia. Th does is my shit the new Australia magically? And if I make a second one. Second shit and put another Australian flag in it. Does it does it double validate the fact that it's a part of Australia? No, none of what. Why does any of this matter? That it has been done previously. Featured in a lot more media than you might think, especially in Japanese media. There's a list here of some of the work that he's been featured in on Wikipedia. Uh, he's you know quite the sort of. I wonder when this was edited. Outlier, obviously, in that era of Japan. And Ubisoft decided to lean into that character, make him a protagonist, and that's an aspect that's causing rifts and divisions among people who believe that, you know, I, I think both of these characters should have been Japanese or whatever. I personally, to be honest, don't care. I think it's a bold and interesting choice. And whether I... Of course you're going to say that, you little shill. Like this decision or not will obviously just depend on the execution. Whatever you like this decision or not is going to depend on the fact that you want to work in the games industry and be a voice actor. And you saying good stuff about a shit piece like Ubisoft uh, it is increasing your chances of working with them. Because if you say something bad about them, well, they're definitely not going to hire you then what they do with the character if they make a good story and have good character moments and a good character arc and it all ties into a good theme and uh you know all of it is combined with good gameplay and uh it all just comes together in a package that's just good and tells a good story and this character feels like you know there's purpose to being chosen as a protagonist of this game then great this is different yeah the purpose of being chosen as the protagonist of this game is the fact that, you know, we, we just, Japanese are obviously too white and that's bad. So there, there we go, a little bit of that diversity. Different from what I was expecting, but that makes it all the more intriguing. You know, it makes me more curious about what they- He doesn't even believe what he's saying. Look, look, look at that spastic eye blinking. But that makes it all the more intriguing. You know, it makes me- No, that's not the one. Then great. This is different from what I was expecting, but- yeah, well, uh, yeah, he doesn't even believe this. He just needs to lean into the things. That makes it all the more intriguing. You know, it makes me more curious about what they do with this and if they can take that thing that is so unexpected and make it into something compelling, then, you know, I'm all for that prospect and possibility. In terms of historical accuracy, I don't know. Again, I'm no historian, but also Assassin's Creed isn't really known. I don't know. People are doing a thing. I, I don't know. We... I don't know. People are doing a thing. I don't know. I guess I shouldn't say anything because I don't know. These people are just doing a thing because they feel like it. But since I don't know anything about it, I guess I'm just not going to do anything. Could have, you know, you could have res researched this topic before you talked about it if you don't know shit. How about that? A little bit too much for you? for its historical accuracy like when you think about how ubisoft utilizes a lot of famous historical figures throughout the assassin's creed games it's kind of nuts and very inaccurate to real world history assassin's creed has always been historical fiction dramatized romanticized exaggerated and way out there so i'll be honest i don't yeah people people are bringing this this up as probably the best point that honestly there is to try and defend this slop uh, but the reality is no Assassin's Creed has, yes, it's an alternative, fictional, different universe and whatnot, but they do try, uh, but they kind of lean into the historic accuracy as much as possible in a lot of cases. Here, 
They just don't. They don't give a shit. This is all about just that sweet, sweet BlackRock DEI check. That's it. Nothing else. Really look for historical accuracy in an Assassin's Creed game. Like, there are historical elements that they try to obviously ground and uh, retain, uh, but in terms of the stuff that happened... Yeah, historical elements, like who is actually there to begin with. For example, but here it doesn't matter. ...happens in between certain key historical beats. Uh, Ubisoft just kind of makes it all up, and it's all just fiction and pseudo-history, so... I don't know. That's my stance on that. To me, this is not the thing that... Good. So, uh, so we can just make, you know, uh, you, ne the next Assassin's Creed is going to be in Africa and everyone's going to be white because we were the original Africans. I, I, I bet Young Gear yeah, is going to love that because it's fictional history. <laughs> concerns me in any way shape or form i'll have to wait and see how they execute uh with these two characters if you want to know more about the game in terms of the details of its story setting gameplay uh and open world elements and whatnot there are two ign articles covering assassin's creed shadows extensively this one right here titled assassin's creed shadows inside ubisoft's ambitious open world japan that kind of has this whole article covering an interview that they did with the developers and we got this article right here, Assassin's Creed Shadows, 40 details you need to know that has a bullet list and a really well organized kind of list of information highlighting some of the key learnings that uh, we got from IGN's coverage of this game. So that's there for you to partake in if you so desire. Now let's talk about the thing that I think is much more worth scrutinizing. It's, of course, the numerous editions that they're selling for Assassin's Creed Shadows. We got editions that go all the way up to $130. This is literally a copy-paste from the Star Wars one, obviously. Again, Ubisoft. If, if you say that we don't own the games that we buy, then you don't own the games that you sell. And again, just, just don't buy them. Download them on some other place for free. You know, there's plenty of places like that. If Ubisoft... Again, Ubisoft doesn't own this game. <laughs> if we can't buy it to own it, then they can't sell it because they don't own it. It's just, it's just basic logic. Don't give them money. Dollars. If this seems familiar to you, that's because they're doing exactly the same thing with Star Wars Outlaws. As for what these editions get you, well, for the standard edition that costs $70, you get the base game, and you have to pre-order if you want to get one of the game's missions. As you can see right here, yeah. one of the pre-order bonuses is that you get an Assassin's Creed Shadows bonus quest thrown to the dogs. So already, we're getting locked content if you don't order the game before it comes out and what's egregious about these pre-orders going up right now is that we I still have it. not seen gameplay of assassin's creed shadows they've shown off this why would you need to see gameplay when you can you can see how much value you're gonna get for spending 130 bucks on this game the whole controversy about you know uh yasuke is just to uh, just to hide the fact that this game costs 130 bucks at the end of the day don't Order the game about these pre-orders going up right now is that we still have not seen gameplay of Assassin's Creed Shadows. They've shown off this CGI set. If you have seen gameplay of one Assassin's Creed, congratulations. You have seen gameplay from every Assassin's Creed. Cinematic and all of the Assassin's Creed CGI cinematics look great and they always get you hyped up, but they're seldom representative of actual gameplay. The actual game for me always tends to be a little underwhelming and nowhere near as epic and- A little? Assassin's Creed is one of those games that literally does not implement anything new if, at each release of their franchise. And but yet they somehow magically get verse and verse and you know executing all all the stuff that they have already done fifty times before. As enticing as the CGI trailers make them be, so I always wait for gameplay trailers before making decisions or before uh, kind of deciding whether I'm excited for this game or not. To see Ubisoft put up pre-orders for editions that go from seventy to one hundred and thirty dollars while having showed off zero gameplay, nothing about how the game actually looks and plays, that is already a big red flag, no pun intended. And on top of that, the fact that in order to access another quest, 
that is a part of this season pass. As you can see right here, the Assassin's Creed Shadow Season Pass includes a bonus quest on day one with additional unlockable content as well as two upcoming expansions. The fact that you have to purchase this $110 edition, that's $40 more than the base game. I mean, you're already spending 110 bucks. Why not add just 20 extra and you get the... I'm not sure what you're even getting. The ultimate pack. Like, how do you how do you not want to get the ultimate pack? That's crazy. To gain access to a quest that's ready, that is available on day one, that they are artificially deciding to paywall and lock behind this edition that includes a season pass, that gets the blood boiling. That is straight up unacceptable and a practice that Ubisoft is trying to normalize more and more that I would not like to see normalized. We're not talking about little bits of cosmetics. We're actually talking about gameplay content. We're talking about full quests. And regardless of whether these are substantial quests or insubstantial quests in both scenarios, it looks bad because if these quests are substantial and give you some good rewards and are actually fun quests, then you're paywalling good content that's ready for day one behind what a stupid argument even if the quest was bad boring and dumb you're still taking content and paywalling and, and it's bad it doesn't really matter if the quest is good or not the fact that you're just doing it in general is bad either paying more money or ordering the game before you really know what the game even is and if it's insubstantial quests that are not that big of a deal then you're kind of devaluing the f fact that you're paying 40 more dollars for a gold edition of the game and just on principle it doesn't matter whether the quests feel substantial or not it's content that should be readily available for everyone if you pay the base price you should have all the in-game content available especially where it's concerning gameplay affecting stuff where it's concerning activities that you do in uh -huh. the game and then of course we've got the three days early access that is only included with the a classic the reality is everyone almost buys the one with early access because if you're hyped about this you want to play it when it comes out and the reality is the the real game launch is the three day early access one that is the worst part about this because we succumb to the hype that that's the reality if the three days early did not matter, people would not do this. Because three day early access was done years ago while it was the only thing, while game developers were actually afraid to cut out a, a part of the game and requesting that you pay like 50 bucks more for it. It's just brutal, man. It's brutal and sad, to be honest. In any case, what's happening here? Let's let's check this. Need that one time online connection to install. Ah, uh, young guys just going around in circles. Anyway. Yeah. I'll see you see guys, you guys next, next time. time. Young young out. Woo! Wait, he didn't do the uh, thing. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.